Hello, hi, thank you once again for joining me. In this message, I'm going to take a look at Romans chapter 6, beginning at verse 9. I know this is very familiar with a lot of us, but I thought I would go over it for the benefit of those who might still be wondering what it is all about. <clears throat> so may the Lord bless us as we look into his word, and we just thank you, Lord, for your blessing upon us now, Lord. We Thank you, Lord. We're trusting and believing on you, Lord, to open the eyes of our heart once again, Lord, we pray. Thank you, Jesus, Lord. I'm reading from the King James Version. This is one more short message in a series of short messages, which I'm trusting will help many believers. Glory to God. Knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, died no more. Wonderful. Glory to God. Again, the same for us. Having been raised, death will have no more dominion. Death at the moment, of course, has no dominion upon us. The victory of the grave has passed away because we have died with Christ. But in the fulfillment of that, we, we die no more. Glory to God. Death had no more dominion over him. Speaking about Jesus. For in that he died. This is an insight into his death. Okay, verse 10. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. That's very, very important. He died unto sin once for all, you could say. And that's over. It's over. It's finished. He doesn't keep dying to sin all the time. But in that he liveth, he is now living his life unto God. You might say, well, that's wonderful for Jesus. I'm delighted for him. Okay, not being cynical. I'm just simply saying because many, many believers, many believers are still struggling with sin. especially. <clears throat> the sin that so easily entangles, but not only that, all kinds of sin, particularly the sin of unbelief. So we look at that again and we say, so Jesus is now free from all of that. He's living his life unto God, fully in the spirit, alive unto God, always. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus, for that. But look what he says, Paul says in verse 11. Paul says, uh, likewise, likewise meaning in the very same way, you also consider yourself to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. And then in verse 12 he said, Let sin, let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in the lust thereof. So, we're all delighted for Jesus, okay, but then Paul says that we're to reckon ourselves always the same way, in the same way, dead indeed unto sin, and alive unto God through Christ Jesus our Lord. But I know that you will say to me, but sin still has dominion, Noel. I'm sorry to say I'm still falling into sin and I'm missing the mark on many different ways. I know I am. I know my conscience condemns me when I miss. So how can that be, you know? But that's not what Paul is saying. Paul is not saying to look at your experience or to look at your falling. He's saying to stop recognising that. That's what he's really saying. Stop recognising the number of falls that you have. Now, he's not saying to deny that you're falling and to tell lies of it. <clears throat> That's not what he's saying. That's something you acknowledge before God, that you've missed the mark, or you're not bearing fruit in certain areas of your life. Glory to God. That's fair enough. Be truthful and open and honest. An honest heart It's the only one that will bear fruit. So we thank you, Lord. But what he really is saying, you must still consider yourself dead indeed unto sin. He doesn't say to consider yourself or reckon yourself dead indeed unto sin when you stop sinning. No, he's not saying that. Even while you're in your present condition, stop recognizing yourself, okay? That's in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 16. I might just take a look at that. Stop recognizing yourself as a sinner. Okay, that's very, very important. And stop recognizing yourself as sinning. The most important thing is to remember that if you're living a sincere life and sin, you might still be entangled with sin, but your heart is sincere in all that you're doing, then you have to consider yourself perfect before God and Christ is holding nothing against you and it's not being credited to your account. Glory to God, because in your life of faith, sincere faith and love with Christ, Nothing is being credited to your account. So Paul says, consider yourself dead indeed unto sin. And not only that, but in the same measure, alive unto God through Christ Jesus our Lord. 
And that alive means you're alive from the dead. You're alive from the dead unto God. Okay? You present yourself unto God, says another verse, as one who has been brought from death unto life. Thank you, Father God. That's very, very important. Even if you're, even if you're still falling. Remember, you cannot wait until you become perfect in, in your experience before you consider yourself dead and dead unto sin. Because then <clears throat> you'll be giving power to sin. As you as you can conscious and rec continue to recognize glory to God falling short all the time and separating yourself from God, you're giving power to sin. Stop giving it power. The power of sin is broken because of the righteousness of God imputed to you. Therefore, sin has no power. So ignore it in the sense that <clears throat> it does not separate us from God anymore. It does not break the union we have with Christ. Glory to God. It does not break it. It only, <clears throat> if we consider it to break it, then we are the one breaking the union. That's so important. So there you go. It's not just Jesus now who is alive unto sin, dead to sin once for all, and alive unto God. It's we also. And that's why we consider ourselves so that the Spirit of God has full access and liberty. And that's why he says, do not let sin therefore reign in your mortal body. That's why he's saying it. That's the key to not letting it reign. By you considering it and recognizing it and giving it power in your life, you're allowing it to reign. Stop letting it because of the righteousness of God imputed to us. And standing in that righteousness, sin power is broken and its reign is finished. I hope you can hear that. May the Lord bless you. There will be other verses as well. We touch upon that in the name of Jesus. But what I will do, <clears throat> now I will, I, I'll, I'll pass, cover that again in, in other ways, in other verses. Thank you very much for joining me. A short video. May the Lord bless you in the name of Jesus and join me again soon. <laughs>